Look at the points on him too. They're just long. He's got mass, he's got width, he's got points. I hunted this exact location a year ago and I returned mostly because I saw a bull with antlers that normally only exist in dreams. He was a beast of mythical proportions, but he was far across the muskeg and we were never able to get within rifle range. We dubbed him Gigantor and he's been growing in my mind's eye ever since. The word Alyeska is an Aleut term meaning great land, and in 1867, then U.S. Secretary of State William Seward paid Russia $7.2 million for all of Alaska, transferring ownership of the territory that's twice the size of Texas. That's two and a half cents per acre. I would have paid double that. Despite what we now know as the greatest land grab since Patton's Third Army, Seward was harshly criticized as some in the media quickly coined the purchase, Seward's Folly or Seward's Icebox, and my personal favorite, the Polar Bear Garden. Philistines, few great men are ever appreciated in their own time. Well, we're off to celebrate Seward's lasting legacy. Welcome to Alaska and welcome to the Wild Edge. Got to the runway, but there's a little light that says low voltage and it's still on. So we, uh, I think, pretty smartly decided to come back. The pilot said, you know, it's not going off. We might have some other issue here. And we might as well deal with it when we're on the ground. Doesn't that make a lot of sense? Yes, it does. 30 minutes and a new generator later, and we were ready for the wild blue yonder in base camp. The chance to come back here, I mean, is really the fulfillment of a dream because I've, I've been dreaming about that bull ever since I saw him last year. I was the last hunter of last season. Nobody's been into Moose Lake where I'm hunting him this year at all this year. So there's a good chance he's still there, Lord willing. Very important to make sure the rifle's on. No air in the rifle whatsoever, but then you have to get the shooter on. So the whole business here is I've, I've taken three balloons. They're about 50, 40, and about 35 yards that really represent, if a grizzly were to charge, if we were to walk in on a, say, a moose kill, something like that, there happens to be a grizzly there. You're in grizzly country after all. These are three successive shots, and that's to get the shooter on to make sure you can shoot. But practice offhand because very often you're not gonna have time for a rest. You wanna be able to hit these targets. So here we go, let's see if we can do it. It's gonna be one, two, three. And go. That's how you do it, right there. You know, the chance to come back to Alaska, this land where I saw an absolutely enormous moose last year. It's one of those bulls that just sort of lays out. It looks like a four by eight sheet of plywood. So the chance to come back here, I mean, is really the fulfillment of a dream. It's really good news. The wind is dying down. Looks like we're gonna get out of here. We're finally going moose hunting. You gotta have a lot of patience when you get here, that's, that's for sure. One question, how did you get this thing out of the Smithsonian anyway? Yeah. Climbing inside of Tom's bush plane, looking like one of Wilbur and Orville's early creations, well, there's a leap of faith. Wonder why my life insurance premiums are so high? It's not that I'm fond of playing tag with elephants and buffalo and lions and bears. It's a fact that I routinely fly bush taxis. Oh, forgive me, Father. Then the Super Cub with the big Tundra tires on it, these big balloon tires, I mean, it's amazing. It's, it's like a controlled crash when they come down and it's rocked. You, you see what he's gonna land on and, and you just, you're like, wait a minute, you're not landing there, are you? Next thing you know, you're just bouncing along and those big tires just absorb that. Look up Mountain Man in the dictionary and I might conclude with, see also Bob Graham. 
He's either that or the long lost Travelocity gnome or a cast member of the last Ricola commercial spot. He's the consummate guide and gentleman and reason enough for me to come back to Alaska for the father of all moose that snubbed us a year ago. I believe it's a small black bear who decided to come in and help us out with some of our goodies and uh, came in the front and ripped that open and then apparently went out here and uh, ripped this open. These camps are very simple camps. These are very rustic camps. I mean, these are total wilderness camps. So when you come here, you got to come here with the right frame of mind. And if you do, if you pitch in every time there's something that has to be done, make it a big wilderness experience. Enjoy your guide. Be patient. And as Bob says, it takes a pocket full of patience to, to be a moose hunter here in Alaska. So make sure you have that kind of mindset coming into this experience. It'll be that much better at the end. I'm not sure if this is going to fit the covenants of the neighborhood or not, but you know, as long as the HOA doesn't show up, as long as the bears don't complain. Once I was a country kid who dreamed of hunting the neighbor's farm. Now my horizons, thankfully, stretch the world of hunting opportunity. No matter how far the journey or how epic the game, however, all adventures are still measured against my wonderment as a kid and that first step onto new and unfamiliar territory. That's a bull. That's got to be him. That's, that's exactly the same spot we saw him last year. I mean, it's just impossibly wide. It's freakish how big that thing is. I mean, he's got a 60-incher down there with him that looks like an absolute runt. At this distance, you get sort of definition as he moves against the yellow. You can see the antler outline. I mean, it's just impossibly wide. I mean, we're talking world record dimensions on this bull. This is, an, this is way closer to 80 than 70. That is a huge bull. The first morning we get here, exactly in the same spot that I saw him last year, unbelievable. There's two bull moose. One is just impossibly wide. And I said, Bob, there he is, unbelievable. 365 days later, there he is. Any reason for him to go that way at all? Not really. I think normally they'll come either down the shoreline or just inside the wood line. There is a good trail just 10, 15 yards in there. Yeah, I watched that little bull last year work its way 10, 15 yards up from the water all the way down to this bottom. They'll feed back up in to this end of the lake or into this hole down here to a, what we, you know, we call the hole. It's a Jurassic bull right there. Moose come in many different sizes, from the spindly antlered European variety to the mid-sized Canadian moose to the giants of Alaska and the Yukon. Chris, there's a cow down here in the water now. She was looking back to her left like maybe there was something coming, but she's back eating now. But those, those others may work their way on around here. We can only hope. So they're probably, probably sitting down in these trees in the bottom yet, don't you think? Yeah, down in their feet, and I believe is what they're doing. In my experience, we never see moose moving when it's that windy. We get up there and we had more activity of moose all day in that wind than I've seen in years out here. If you were going to write a prescription for moose habitat, this is exactly what it would look like right here. There's really no way in high wind to be able to call and, and hope that an animal is going to hear it. But they're clearly in the rut. They're chasing cows. They're, they're really moving big time. If you try and intercept a bull like that, you can forget it. I mean, there's no way you're going to catch up to a bull like that. The fact that I saw him last year, saw him again this year, you know, we just had to stay on him. It's one of those I didn't want to give up. I didn't even want to look at other moose. This guy was that spectacular. We just have to demonstrate great patience. I hear it's a virtue. I just don't have any. <laughs> God, it came all the way from the bottom. You got to be able to move on him here in Alaska, and it's really tough in this kind of country. Alaska, there is the dramatic frontier of God's finest work, what some call heaven on earth. Then there is the wet, raw, mosquito and fly infested wilderness you can't wait to leave. It is a place with unrivaled riches of game, but she doesn't relinquish her gems easily. She devours the impatient who try to impose their will on her. You enter and leave on her terms and on her time. There is no other way, for this is Alaska, and any thought otherwise is merely the bravado of the foolhardy. As Steve McQueen once famously said, I'd rather wake up in the middle of nowhere than in any city on earth. And Moose Camp, Alaska, <laughs> well, it qualifies as the middle of nowhere. Of the two cows over here, I bet were the ones that that bull was with. This gal down here is just basically hanging. I just wonder if the big daddy's bedded down in there. 
Can't believe none of these three cows would have that bull attached to them in this area, given that he was over here, you know. You'd think one of these would be one of his. Oh. Moose don't do anything fast. They appear to be in slow motion most of the time, and when you call a bull from a thousand yards or more, you need patience. These aren't coyotes coming to a distressed rabbit call after all. Let a bull amble his way through cover until he presents the right shot. Just keep your nerve steady and you'll be fine. Easy to say anyway. I use both the cow call and the bull grunt, and also thrashing of the uh, brush or trees, uh, making a racket like they do when they brush the, or fight the brush with their horns. And that will draw them too. They just, they've got to come and see who is this guy causing this fuss. With the rut on, there's so many moose in this area and there's gigantic moose as well, but there's also the, the younger stages of, of moose that are coming up. So these young satellite bulls are working all the time because the big guys are chasing them off keeping him away from the cows. God, he came all the way from the bottom. He's maybe a three or four year old bull, just a little guy, but he's clearly in the mood, clearly looking, and uh, Bob starts getting on the call, and, and I mean, this thing just comes on a rope. Here it comes, here it comes. The Bull Moose. Roosevelt named a political party after it, and ABC created a cartoon about it. There's no beast more emblematic of the North Woods. With lodgepole legs, a ridiculous nose that even Carl Malden could hide behind, in a cape that's more bear than deer-like, the moose simply has no rival. This thing took about an hour and a half from the point at which we saw him at the bottom of the valley to get to us. And uh, I mean, he comes within 75 yards and he's, he's broadside, he's got a lake behind him. I mean, it would have been absolutely exactly how you would paint it if you wanted the ultimate scene to take a moose. All he needed was about six or seven more years and a whole lot more width and mass. Oh, look at that. If only. Dang, how fun is that, huh? There's something about sipping two fingers at Jack Daniels while staring into an Alaskan campfire before cocooning into a sleeping bag for the night. It just takes me to a happy place, like I've stepped into a Jack London novel. Whereas London once wrote, the function of a man is to live, not to merely exist. I shall not waste my days trying to prolong them. I shall use my time. Amen and another round on the house. There he is, he's coming, right, right on there. One second I thought he was mine and then suddenly just disappeared. I mean, it, how could something this big just disappear like that? The beauty of woods, valleys, mountains, and skies feeds the soul where the quest of game only whets the appetite. Saxton Pope, 1923. And boy, is that the case in wild Alaska. Yeah, one second there's nothing, and the next second there they are. He is a monster. King of the forest, that one. He's coming out. Boy, you can see that bone coming, can't you? Just looks like a sail out there. This thing is just an epic moose, really wanted to get him, and he's just on the move following these cows, working his way around the backside of a lake. We just waited it out. He is really, really wide and very, very tall. That is really a beautiful moose. Yeah, he's making tracks big time right now, but I mean. He's moving. He's big time in the rut. He's moving like that. I'm not seeing him now. He was dropping down towards the lake, I think. I think so too. We waited, we waited, we waited, finally, we hear a, oh, oh. I hear him, I, I just don't see him. Oh, there he is, he's coming, right right on there. He's got, gotta go. It was our bull that had the two cows. He had taken care of those two cows. He was on his own and he was on a mission. Oh. Bobby got his call oh. going and he started raking branches and this thing just started responding. Grunt an Alaskan moose to within a few yards of your position and you'll recalibrate your adrenaline scale. Watching antlers the size of a four by eight sheet of plywood approach undoubtedly has the same effect on a, on a modern hunter as a mammoth approaching caveman probably did. Though having only a spear as backup, well, that might have raised the pucker factor just a bit. That's our guy. If you can get a shot there, it's 352 is the range. 
If he hits that clearing, I can take him. I've been hunting a moose now for two years, and that was my guy. And there he was, almost within my reach. I didn't want to screw up the shot, didn't want to rush the shot, so I just let him ease through. Come on, Daddy-O. Go ahead. Good, good hit, you got him there. He dropped to the shot, huh? I lost him in the recoil. Yeah, he, just, he went down instantly. <sighs> Super. That is a hell of a bull. Sometimes when a day of field is so perfect, the country, the company, and the take all conspire to achieve a sense of fulfillment in me that I know at no other time, I wonder if my sons will know such satisfaction and, in so understanding, will know me in a way that doesn't require explanation. Look at that! Have you ever seen antlers like that? Not woven like that. I mean, I could make out he was non-typical to a degree, but you picked this out right away the first time we saw him. Yeah, he's a... Look at that. This thing here is it's special and unique. That, oh, yeah. that convolution and that uh, abnormal stuff there just makes him really, really special. This is probably the guy we saw last year, don't you think? I, I mean, think so. Impossibly wide. I'll tell you what, it's just incredible, man. I mean, woo! Palsy? <laughs> Way to go, man. I was so stoked. I, I told Tom, I said, look, I'll come back in the condition that I get. Bob is a guide, and I can hunt Moose Lake one more time. <laughs> My prayers have been answered. <laughs> Step into a modern trophy room and the spirit of the place will differ little from the cave paintings of 10,000 years ago. I'm sure someday, long after I'm dust, my trophies will wind up in some obscure tavern clouded with Marlboro smoke as patrons make love to their tonic and gins. Yep, I suffer no delusions that my taxidermy means anything to anyone other than me. And I'm okay with that. I just hope someone someday downs a shot and salute to the animals and wonders just how did they get there in the first place.